Learn by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early to get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you are a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon! again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live. It's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week.
again, it's Annie, back to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Welcome to episode number 33 of season 2 of Live with Annie. In today's episode, we are going to introduce our updated pattern, Pack It In 2.0. We'll talk about the features of these handy packing cubes that help you get organized, minimize stress, and streamline packing. We'll also share some tips for choosing fabrics and supplies, as well as some tips for packing, so stay tuned. If you've been with us for previous episodes, you may have noticed some changes today. First, we are also going live on Instagram for the first time, so you can find us there using at Patterns by Annie. Also, if you joined us early today, you will have noticed that we enlarged the countdown clock and added some content to the time before we start. I hope you enjoyed seeing photos that were submitted for our July photo contest. As always, there were some amazing submissions. If you spotted your bag, be sure to leave a comment so we can give you some high fives. And thank you for participating. Also, if you want more info about any of the models you saw, please remember that you can find all the details at byannie.com. Just click on the photo contest slash gallery link on the top menu bar. All of the photos that have been submitted to our photo contest are shown there along with the information included by the maker. The most recent contest photos are at the top, followed by submissions from previous months. If you are looking for some inspiration, it is a great place to go. Before we get started on today's program, I just want to take a minute to thank you all for being with us. Whether you have watched every episode of Live with Annie or this is your first time, we are so happy to have you here. We know that there are lots and lots of things each of you could be doing with this time and the fact that you made time to be with us really means a lot. Be sure to leave a comment to let us know where you are joining us from and whether you are a newer returning viewer. And if you enjoy these episodes, please give us some hearts or thumbs up and take a minute to follow and like us wherever you are watching. If you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we would love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie too. The easiest way to do that is to just tag them while you're watching. That will take them directly to the episode so they can watch it too. If tagging is new to you, just type the at symbol 
followed by the name that they use on the platform you're tagging them from. Their name and picture will pop up so you can make sure you've got the right person. If you do, click add a comment and submit it. Finally, if you have any comments or questions as we go, please be sure to add them in the comments. We love interacting with you and we'll do our best to answer any questions before we close. I need a drink. Glow's reminding me. Hmm. Almost got that one caught. Last week we introduced our updated pattern Travel Duffel Bag 2.1, which is right there. We talked about the features of this handy large duffel and shared tips for gathering fabrics and supplies to make the bag. If you missed it or want to watch it again, remember that you can find all of the previous episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com. We will put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. Again, today we are going to showcase our updated pattern, Pack It In 2.0, which includes instructions to make this awesome set of packing cubes. Constructed of lightweight mesh and quilted fabric, the cases hold their shape and are perfect for sorting and separating all your travel items or other supplies. A soft mesh window on top provides breathability, ooh, that's a hard word to say, breathability, and it also makes it easy to see what's inside. We are going to start today by playing the and introduction and a closer look videos for Pack It In 2.0. Once those are done, I'll be back to talk a little more about what you'll need to make the set, share some packing tips, and talk about what's changed from the previous version. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. I am excited to tell you about our pattern Pack It In 2.0, which includes instructions for zippered cases in three sizes. These handy cases will help you get organized, minimize stress, and streamline packing and unpacking. They are perfect for anyone who travels or has stuff to store. Using Pack It In 2.0 as you pack, you can group items together by type of clothing or by use. You won't have to dig through the whole suitcase to find everything you need for your afternoon on the beach. The pattern includes instructions for cases in three sizes, which fit perfectly in standard suitcases. By packing in bite-sized chunks, the process goes quickly, and filling the suitcase takes just minutes. To make it easy to sort out each person's belongings when you get to your destination, color code a set of cases for each member of the family. No more opening a suitcase to have things spill out in a mess. Unpacking is easy, and whether you're a roller or a folder, Pack It In 2.0 cases will help keep your clothing wrinkle-free. When not in use, the cases may be nested inside each other for storage. Pack It In 2.0 cases are constructed of quilted fabric, so they hold their shape. The zippered lid features a mesh window that gives breathability, expansion, and easy identification of contents. The soft mesh fabric won't damage delicate fabrics. The lid opens wide for full access to everything inside and zips closed easily to keep things safe and secure. For easy carrying, there is a sturdy strap on the back of each case. But Pack It In 2.0 cases aren't just for travel. Use them at home to hold toys, games, and projects in process. Their unisex design makes them perfect for children, women, and men. You are sure to find lots of fun ways to use these handy cases. The Pack It In 2.0 pattern includes step-by-step -step instructions to make professionally finished cases and is an update of the original Pack It In pattern, which was first released in 2016. The new 2.0 version doesn't change the design of the cases, but we've improved the illustrations and layout to make it easier to read and follow, and filmed an add-on video to help you with the more unique or challenging aspects of the pattern. You will love this new version. Ask for Pack It In 2.0 at your local quilt shop or find it at byannie.com. 
If you have more questions, be sure to watch the A Closer Look video, which gives more info about gathering supplies and customizing the project. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie, and I'd like to give you a little more information about our pattern, Pack It In 2.0. This pattern includes instructions for making handy zippered cases in three sizes. Each case has a solid base and a see-through lid, which are connected by a zippered strip which forms the front, back, and sides. You will quilt soft and stable with fabric to make the majority of the parts and use mesh for the window in the lid. Pack It In 2.0 cases are small projects, and each case uses a yard or less of each fabric, so these are perfect for using fabrics from your stash or coordinating prints from your favorite designer. The construction of these cases makes it easy to work with directional fabrics, too. The pattern recommends three fabrics for each case. A main fabric used for the exterior, a lining fabric used for the interior, and a coordinating fabric. The coordinating fabric, which is not quilted, is used for the handle, zipper pulls, and bindings. Be sure to coordinate your zipper and mesh, too. Since the pieces needed for these bags are fairly small, they are a perfect project for quilting on domestic machines. If you need more information about quilting, please check out our free patterns, Peacekeeper and Easy Does It. You'll find lots of tips for quilting in the add-on videos for those projects. You will find a full list of supplies on the back cover of the Pack It In 2.0 pattern. If you don't yet have the pattern, you can also find the list on the Pack It In 2.0 product page at byannie.com. Just click on the Supply List tab. There are a number of ways that you can mix and match fabrics to make cases that are uniquely yours and to make best use of supplies you may have on hand. I made this fun set for my daughter-in-law to use when she travels. She loves color and design, so I used a big variety of fabrics from one of our favorite designers to make her set. I also used different colors of coordinating fabric, zippers, and mesh for each. On this set of Pack It In 2.0, we used the same fabrics for all three cases. This enabled us to quilt a larger piece of fabric on the long arm and made cutting extra quick. We could also cut one large square of fabric for the bias binding, resulting in a nice long strip of binding with fewer seams. This will be a perfect set for any quilter who loves kaif and wants to organize her sewing supplies. Pack It In 2.0 cases are also great for using leftover quilted fabric from other projects. To mix things up and add some interest, you can alternate the main and lining fabrics using the main on the exterior of one bag and the lining for the exterior of another. These cases will fit perfectly into my new travel duffel bag, and the handles on top will make it easy to remove them to take out my laptop, Kindle, and toiletries when I go through security at the airport. If you want to vary the fabrics used for the cases you make, you are welcome to do that. Just know that you will have to come up with your own cutting diagrams and you may need different amounts of fabrics than what is called for on the supply list. Because the Pack It In 2.0 cases are fairly small and have relatively few pieces, they make a great afternoon or weekend sewing project. The project involves skills used in many Biani patterns, quilting, binding, and assembling a dimensional bag. To help ensure success, we filmed an add-on video for Pack It In 2.0. Note that if you are working with the original Pack It In pattern instead of the 2.0 version, these videos will help you understand the process for that pattern too. The new pattern has been rearranged, so steps are numbered differently, but the dimensions and procedures are basically the same. The Pack It In 2.0 pattern is fun and easy to make. These handy cases will help you get organized, minimize stress, and streamline packing and unpacking. We can't wait to see what you make and how you use these versatile cases, so be sure to share pictures of your finished projects with us. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about how Packet in 2.0 is designed and some of the ways that you can use these handy cases. I especially enjoyed watching Casey and Glow get packed for, those, for their trip. Those two really know how to have fun. Keep in mind, packet in cases are fun, they're easy to make, and they make really great gifts for men, women, or children. By varying the fabric used to suit the recipient, you'll be sure to make a gift that anyone will love. This is a new set that we finished recently, made using Tim Holtz's um, abandoned and um, provisions line, I believe they were called, and it would make a great set for any guy. Move these out of the way. So I have used packet in cases for many years, and I can tell you that they really do take the stress out of packing. Before COVID changed everything, I was on the road almost half of the year. So I really had mastered how to pack quickly, easily, and efficiently without stress. If packing is a chore for you, here are some tips that might help. First, I developed a system for packing, and packet-in cases are a really integral part of that system. So I have a set of packet-in cases, and each one has an assigned purpose. That way I know just what goes into it, and I'm sure not to forget anything important. So the small case is the one that I use for my socks, underwear, and bras. By folding each of these items carefully, I can pack enough for a week. So I've got seven sets of underwear, seven sets of socks. That's enough even for a couple weeks with doing laundry once during the trip. So that's my small one. I use the medium case for pants or shorts. And I can usually fit four to six pairs in the case. I really love that the mesh on top expands. So if it's a bit full, like I've got two pairs of shorts here on top, and then I've got four pairs of pants underneath. If I'm folding, I usually fold shorts in half, pants in thirds, um, but as you can see here, I rolled the pants in the bottom, and that's another good way to do it and maybe prevent some wrinkles. So leave us a comment and let us know whether you are a roller or a folder. Um, I'm sure there are distinct camps out there for both. But again, as I said, even though this is a little bit full, I can zip this shut and that lid expands really well to hold in what's in there and kind of help compress it into a smaller area. Let me get those pants out of the way and get that zipped up. So there's my medium one. In the large one, I put, I'm gonna just move these off the table. So in the large one, I put all my jackets, shirts, and uh, things that I want to hang. And I learned this method of packing from my dear friend Heather, who um, taught me this when we were traveling and doing a lot of shows together. So when I'm ready, when I get to the hotel and I'm ready to unpack, because everything is on a hanger and ready to hang up, I can just pull everything up, hang it in the closet, and I'm done, un I'm unpacked in no time. So the secret of this method is to make sure that you layer things um, with the heaviest or the biggest item on the bottom. So in this case, I've got a jacket or a sweatshirt that I'm going to take. And when I'm ready to pack, I just lay this out on my bed and I make sure that I've got the, the, the sleeves out to the side and my hanger is at the top. Then I take my next heaviest item, which in this case is a sweater, lay it on top, stretch my, um, sleeves out again and I just keep going layering all the items that I'm taking for my trip and my secret is to keep all my hangers together and even at the top and to keep everything nice and flat in here so I'm not um, getting wrinkles in things keep layering um, lighter and smaller as you go so then when you get to the top everything's nice and flat then you start folding your sleeves in so I'm going to take these sleeves, fold them into the middle, take the next set of sleeves, fold them over those, again keeping everything flat, next set of sleeves over and on top, and as you can see everything's going to stay nice and neat and wrinkle free. Then when it's time to pack it, I just bring my hangers top to the top, about in the middle, fold that over one more time, 
and then I can set that whole um, group right in my packing cube and I've as you can see I've got a lot of room around the edges here I can put my pajamas in there I can put you know whatever else that I want to go in there so I've got plenty of room in there for another again a week's worth of shirts and tops so that's my tips for packing those oh when I'm ready to put those in the suitcase so this is assuming that you've got a standard size suitcase and we kind of showed that in the video but if I'm putting these in a suitcase I will put my larger one usually on the side that when the ha when the bag standing up will be at the bottom and then my medium one fits here my small one fits here and I usually have room for another small one next to that and so I usually take a, a second small one and I use it to corral um, all of my smaller things so I've got my glow and go set with my makeup my the wrap and the bag and then I usually take a few of the pods out of my treasures and trinkets and put my jewelry in it and put those in the bottom and that way everything in there is nice and safe and secure and I remember each of those things needs to go in and and that's packed in my suitcase or if I'm taking more jewelry I just take my small treasures and trinkets with all of that inside so that's how I pack all right let's talk next a little bit about the supplies that you need to make a set of pack it in and we're going to get this off the table and we'll just leave this one here so first of all fabrics um, as the video showed you the pattern calls for three fabrics a main fabric that's used for the exterior of the case let's dig up one that doesn't have anything in it because then you can see the fabrics more easily Pardon me? I can't hear. This is, um, no, this is um, Tim Holtz Provisions. It's the one we showed earlier. Okay. All right, so you've got main fabric for the outside. You've got a lining fabric for the inside. And then we do a coordinating fabric, which is used for the bindings on these, uh, the binding on the outside of the bag, and the handles. If you want to um, mix around that, you certainly can. So if you want it to use, I've seen several people who say they'd rather use lining fabric for the bindings here, and that's certainly um, doable too. You just have to figure out you know, where to cut it out of, of, of other things. Pack it in is a very easy to make with directional fabrics. Just be sure to pay attention to the instructions. The instructions will tell you where the top should be in each case. If you forget that or don't pay attention to it, you end up with what happened to us on this little packet in that we made using a directional fabric. And as you can see, our birds are upside down on the strips that go on the lid. So. Um, pay attention the pattern tells you how to do it you just have to make sure you, you you read what it says all right we did design the packet in cases to have a soft mesh window on the top because we want it to have the visibility ventilation and that little bit of stretch that i showed earlier and a half yard package of mesh will make all three sizes so if you're making all three cases and you want to use the same color one package will do all of them with leftovers for another project if you want it to use quilted fabric for the top and skip the mesh window you could certainly do that all you would need to do is cut the quilted fabric for the top to the very same size as you did for the base and just skip the mesh and the two quilted strips that are on the lid the other items that you're going to need for this is thread and we recommend that you gather thread um, both to match the mesh and the zippers as well as your um, main and lining fabrics we like to use so fine 50 it's a 50 weight polyester thread and it's what we use for all of our projects we also use soft and stable in these um, cases to give them good body and stability if you cut carefully a one yard package is enough to make all three cases and there is a cutting layout in the pattern that shows you how to do that 
Uh, remember that soft and stable comes in black or in white. Um, we suggest using black if you're using darker fabrics, white if you have any lighter fabrics, such as if your lining was really light. And if you're quilting on a long arm, be sure to see the tip that is in the pattern before you cut. Because the strip that goes around the outside of this large case is wider than what a piece of fabric is, you're going to want to piece the fabric before you start quilting it. If you're using pre-quilted fabric, as we often do, you're going to need joint to join two pieces. And you can see right here on this bag, this is where we joined the two pieces. Uh, you can see there's a little strip of fabric on both sides, but if you weren't looking for that, you would never notice that. And if you watch our Using Directional Fabrics video, um, you're going to find tips for doing that. I did get an email this just this week from someone who asked if she could skip the soft and stable in the packet ink cubes and just make them with ripstop nylon um, so that she wouldn't have the extra weight. And I don't see any reason why you couldn't do that, though I really do like the structure that Soft and Stable gives the cases. I like the fact that they stand up, and as I put things in them, they're not falling down. Um, I did weigh a set of these. All three cases, when they're empty, weigh just a little bit over a pound, so I'm really not worried about that little bit of extra weight. Um, I can easily skip a pound of something that I'm taking um, in order to have the organization that these give me. All right, you're also going to need the, some zippers for the, for the cases. If you're making the small one, you need a 30 inch double slide. For the medium one, that's the medium one. What did I do with the small one? Here it is. So a 30 inch is what you need for the small, a 40 inch for the medium, and then for the large, you need 50 inches. And if you're familiar with our zippers, you know that the largest single zipper we sell is a 40 inch. So to make the large one, you will need to make a 50 inch zipper using zippers by the yard. So one package of zippers by the yard will make zippers for all three um, cases and you'll have leftovers for another project as well. There is a handle at the top of each of these cases, so it makes it e them easy to carry. It's reinforced with one inch strapping, and all you need is a one yard package to make enough for all three cases. Since these handles are designed to be covered with fabric, we just carry strapping in black or white, so choose the color that best matches your fabric. I certainly would use black for fabrics like this. So that's all you need, a little bit of mesh, a little bit of soft and stable, some fabric. These are great for using um, scraps and things from your stash. As with the other patterns that we updated this season, the main reason that we updated Pack It In was so that we could include an add-on video. But as always, when we update a pattern, we also reviewed questions and comments that customers had sent to us. We looked at the pattern from every angle to determine if there are ways to improve it, and we sent it through the very same rigorous testing process as we do when we write a new pattern. So in the end, the major changes to Pack It In 2.0 pattern involved filming an add-on video to help with some of the steps, rewording and rearranging the steps in the pattern to make them easier to follow, and adding one more illustration. We also updated a lot of the text as well as the layout and design, and that added one more page to the pattern. So for instance, the new version includes the very helpful for this step you will need section at the beginning of the steps, and having that list of what you need for each step is really, really helpful, and to me, um, worth updating to the newer version just for that. All right, but all that said, the design and dimensions of the case are exactly the same as when um, as the previous version. So here is a set of pack it in cases that are made with the original version. Some of my stuff cleaned off here. These have been around since chipper days for Tula Pink, so these have uh, been around for quite some time. But if you look at them next to the um, newer version, you're going to see that they are basically exactly the same pattern. We didn't change any dimensions or sizes, and they're going to look basically the same. So if you have the older version, do you need to buy the new one? And I would say absolutely not. 
we know that you are going to get really great results making the cases using the original pattern just as we and many other makers have. And if you have the older pattern but you want the video support, you can purchase the add-on video for the 2.0 version for just $5. The video applies to the older version of the pattern too, and we include the appropriate step numbers from that pattern in the video so you can easily find your place. But all that said, remember that the new pattern includes a coupon to get the add-on video at no charge. So for just $9.95, if you buy it from us, you get both the pattern and the video. So basically you're paying less than $5 for the updated version. And in my opinion, just having that for this step you will need section at the beginning of the steps makes updating to the newer version worth every penny. But of course, the choice is yours. Again, we know you are going to have great results with the previous version of the pattern as well as the new one. So I hope you enjoyed learning more about these fun to make packing cubes. I know that you will enjoy making and using them. One thing that I forgot to mention that I really like about them is because my bedroom is upstairs, and I don't want to drag a heavy suitcase. It's a spiral staircase to boot. I don't want to carry a heavy suitcase up and down the, the stairs. I leave my suitcase downstairs. I pack my cubes with everything in them. It's one quick, easy trip to carry things down, pack my bag, and I'm good to go. So that's another real advantage to packing in bite size um, sections instead of all at once in a great big suitcase. So as always, please remember to ask for the patterns and supplies for Packet N 2.0 at your local quilt shop. If they don't have them, they can certainly get them either from us or from their favorite distributor. Remember, local quilt shops are the lifeblood of your sewing community, and we all need to do everything we can to keep them strong and in business. And of course, if you don't have a local quilt shop, you can also find them at Biani.com. I need another quick drink. Go ahead and go down, Nicole. All right, let's go on now to some questions that Casey and Leslie have posted for us. Can you make the pattern using faux leather to make it more manly? I'm, I'm guessing that some of that got cut off. But yes, just like I said with the... Um, with the uh, ripstop nylon, nylon, I think you could easily make it with faux leather. Whether you want to put the soft and stable and lining in um, is up to you. You'd probably want a lining for sure because I don't think that has a nice finish on the back. But yes, I think you definitely could do that. Have you ever substituted quilted fabric for mesh on the sides or bottom? Make the whole thing with... Make the whole... Th well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so I think you could easily substitute quilted fabric for the mesh on the top, but you're wondering about substituting mesh maybe on the sides or bottom. I mean, if you did it on the bottom, it would be essentially the same as doing it on the top. You will notice that when we made this pattern, the mesh goes all the way from edge to edge, and then we put these quilted strips on the top and bottom. We did that to give it some structure and stability because with just mesh, it wanted to pull in and it was much harder to get it to, to look really nice. So trying to do mesh on the sides, I think would be more difficult, um, but truthfully, I've never tried it. So because mesh has a tendency to stretch a little bit, I might be a little bit nervous about that. And to me, just having the mesh on top is um, certainly sufficient. All right, let's move on now to a few announcements. We want to remind you that the All Illinois Shop Hop is taking place all the way until the end of September. Uh, this is the one that's organized by Shop Hop Inc. They have almost 60 shops participating, so be sure to go um, to their website to learn more about shops that are participating along with their exclusive fabrics and prizes. And if you do visit any of these shop pops during the summer or other quilt shops anywhere in the country or world, we always love seeing photos of any by any models or displays that you see, so be sure and send them to us and, and share the love. All right, let's move on now to our featured local quilt shops of the week. One of our favorite events each year is the local quilt shop contest, which we celebrate in February. And during that contest, we encourage sewists to vote for their favorite quilt shop 
and share a little bit about what makes them special. And then to continue the fun and support of those local businesses, each week we highlight a store or more and some of their voter submissions during Live with Annie. So this week we are featuring three shops, all of whom are in the southern U.S. And we're going to start near Augusta at the Country Barn Quilt Company in Martinez, Georgia. I'm not sure how you say that, Mar Martinez or Martinez? I think I heard it Martinez. Anyway, one of those. This awesome shop was opened in August 2019 by Elizabeth Patterson as a way to create a community for local quilters and sewists to meet and spend time together sharing their love of creating. The shop began with a vision for the classroom, which is really an open sew room most of the time. If there isn't a class scheduled, you will always find a handful of customers making use of the space, chatting and sharing ideas. Elizabeth tells me that the shop is an extension of her personal sewing room and is filled with all the products and fabric lines that she loves. It's the only shop in the Augusta area that doesn't sell or service sewing machines, which as Elizabeth says, just leaves more room for the good stuff. Country Barn Quilt Co. celebrated the shop's third birthday on August 6th with trunk shows from Biani, Jaybird Quilts, and Free Spirit. This annual party, which is known for its massive gift basket, gets bigger every year and always has a quirky theme of some sort. This year, it was a three-ring circus. The shop continues to grow, recently expanding to add a room dedicated to holiday fabrics and projects, as well as expanding their Biani and Creative Grids product lines. They also offer materials and supplies for machine piecing and quilting, as well as English paper piecing, wool applique, hand stitching kits, and of course, bag making supplies. Voters in the LQS contest recognized Country Barn Quilt Company for its friendly and helpful staff and extensive inventory. I gotta have another drink. Nancy wrote, I often go with my daughters and the staff makes all of us feel welcome. They always remember us and the projects that we enjoy the most. Kim said they have ever expanding fabric selections and patterns. The staff are very friendly and knowledgeable. They make you feel like you're part of the family. They have open sew classroom time when there's no class being held and several regulars go there to work on projects together. It is an amazing place, and out of all the quilt shops I've visited since 1996 when I started quilting, it is by far the best. And Gail wrote, this is where I go for a big dose of quilting happiness. I loved reading that. She said, it's like the cheers of quilt stores where everybody knows your name, and you can always get what you need to make your imagined projects become reality. Again, Country Barn Quilt Company had a Biani trunk show on display for their birthday. I'm not sure how long it's going to be on display, but check with them if you will be in their area. And happy birthday to everyone at Country Barn Quilt Company. All right, next let's travel to Hartford, Kentucky to Oma Darlins. Owner Oma Flaner tells me that Oma Darlings is a dealer of baby lock sergers and sewing embroidery and quilting machines, embroidery supplies, handy quilter long arm quilting machines, Martelli workstations, Kimberbell products, and lots of Biani products and patterns. Also available are heirloom fashion and quilting fabrics, sewing notions, and heat transfer and, heat and, and adhesive vinyl. Ooh, that's a hard word to say. Oma is an accomplished seamstress and a licensed Martha Pullen instructor of heirloom sewing, specialty serger techniques, and embroidery embellishment. She also teaches English smocking, basic and advanced sewing, and basic embroidery. Oma is assisted by Stacy and Miranda James, a mother-daughter team who help with quilt and project kits and teach sewing and quilting. Customers who voted for Oma Darlings in this year's contest stressed the store's selection as well as the owner and staff's friendly, helpful, and kind service. Lindsay said, The whole team is fun and engaging while having so much to teach. They have a great variety of products, kits, 
fabrics and tools. They offer a lot of teachings for free, plus additional paid classes. I took my first embroidery class with Oma Darlings, and although I'd been sewing for over 10 years, I had never touched a zipper out of fear of messing them up. The whole class cheered me on. Alma taught me how to do it, and everyone celebrated it with me after it was done. I loved that. Sheila said, when you walk in the door, you are instant friends, not just another sale. I was a total beginning quilter, but they have guided me through getting a sewing machine that would do what I wanted but could still afford. And every time I mess up, they help me fix it and keep encouraging me. I do business with them because we have become true friends, as well as them having great products. So again, Oma Darlings will have a Biani trunk show on display in the store throughout the month of August. In addition to the in-person store, they also had a virtual trunk show on their Facebook page this last week. So be sure to go um, to their Facebook page and check it out. And we will put up the link so it's easy for you to find. Also, if you are interested in a class, Alma Darlings is going to be offering a night and day class on August 23rd through 26th. And night and day is our newest pattern, which includes a purse and a little mini tote. Really fun to make, and that would be fun to take a class. And the class will be offered virtually as well as in person, and they have made two different kits for the class that you can get as well. So be sure to contact Oma Darlings for more information about the class and the trunk show. All right, next we are going to end in Mountain Home, Arkansas at Remember Me Quilt Shop. This very well-established shop is located in the trout capital of the world, near three active trout rivers and two huge lakes in north central Arkansas and nestled in the Ozark Mountains. Owner Judith Mahoney, who bought the store from the original founder in February of 2012, says we are heavily visited by many quilters passing through or those ladies whose husbands are out at one of our many resorts fishing. We have even organized classes for groups that are passing through. She also mentioned that about 51% of our population are retirees from somewhere else. Oh, I am so thirsty today. So the store's um, red 5,000 square foot building has a very French quarter look to it, and it features over 3,000 bolts of the newest fabrics, as well as handy quilter long arm machines, Foff sewing machines, and aero cabinets. They also offer long arm quilting services, quilt making services, and some light embroidery services, such as quilt labels and one of a kind, one at a time embroidery. I hadn't heard of that and I thought that was a great idea. Remember Me also stocks many kits, quilt patterns, and books, as well as a fully stocked person bag department. This includes lots of Biani products, including patterns, hardware, zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, and vinyl. The shop offers several classes each month, and they are going to have a three day handy quilter van event coming in mid September. During that event, there will be two hands-on sessions each day for long-arm owner wannabes, as well as for those who already own a long-arm. And the third day will be specifically geared to present handy quilter owners so that they can further enhance their skills and help with any issues they might be having. So if you are visiting Arkansas or Missouri or the surrounding area, be sure to stop in at Remember Me Quilt Shop and tell them that Annie sent you. We want to say thank you again to everyone who joined us today. Uh, we are going to be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time for another fun episode of Live with Annie. Now that we've made it through all our new and updated patterns, as well as all of our episodes about by Annie bag making techniques, I'm thinking that it might be time for something a little bit different. So next week episode, I am planning to just do as a Q&A with Annie session. So if you've got questions that you want to ask me, um, a burning by any question that you want answered, be sure to join us next week. One, one uh, request, if your question involves 
specific patterns or techniques, I will be better prepared if you send me those questions ahead of time. And you can just email them to info at biani.com. The sooner you do that, the better. And depending on how many questions there are, I may not get through them all that day, but I will certainly do my best. And until then, we wish you all happy stitching.